Welcome to the December 2021 real estate market report. I think we can all agree that uh, 2021 has been an exceptional year. We've seen a record number of appreciation. We've seen a record number of um, a volume of sales. And um, we've defied against all odds, you know, the market has actually been extremely strong with a, a lot of appreciation, which was completely unexpected. So the question that a lot of us have in mind right now is, well, what should we expect for December, of course, and for 20? 2022. So in the next 10-15 minutes, I'm going to cover some of uh, the research that my research team has done um, that will give you a better idea of what we expect um, the rest of the year to be like and 2022 as well. So we'll start with this first slide. Um, and, and really, traditionally, um, the time when most uh, listings come online has always been April, May, and June. But with COVID-19 and with um, the, the super low inventory that we've been having, we actually anticipate that we're gonna see more listing this winter, more new listing coming uh, on the market this winter than we've ever seen before. Um, just because this year has just been so uh, been so uh, unusual. Now, if you look at what uh, Jessica Lotz, who is the VP of Demographics and Behavioral Insights at NAR, National Association of Realtors, says, she says that home sellers have historically moved when something in their lives changed. Things like a new baby, a marriage, divorce, or even a new job. The pandemic has impacted everyone, and for many, this has this has been, this became an impetus to sell and make a housing trade. You see, historically, a new baby, a marriage, some significant in life in someone's uh, event in someone's life has created the need to move to buy a bigger or a smaller home. But this year, the pandemic has put everything really on hold. And so some of the traditional forces that come into play are no longer there. And so she continues, the pandemic likely spurred occupants to shorten their home stay as tenure in the home decreased to eight years from 10 years, according to the report. This is the largest single year change in home tenure since ADR began collecting such data. So it's very interesting that if you look at the chart that goes all the way back to 1985, and it charts, you know, how long people are traditionally staying in their home. For the longest time, from 1985 to about 2008, that tenure was six to seven years. That was the accepted average. Then, of course, you know, the crisis hit, and during that time, the length of tenure increased to nine or 10 years, and that's that makes sense, you know. A lot of people were probably underwater, couldn't sell their home, or the market was so bad that, that nobody really wanted to move to do anything. Everybody wanted to the, the storm to go away. But look at what happened this year in 2021. We went down to eight uh, years average tenure. This is the first time in about um, 11 years that the number of years people are staying in their home went down. So this is can be explained um, by what George Ratu of the uh, who is the manager of the Economic Research for Realtor.com says the pandemic has delayed plans for many Americans and homeowners looking to move onto the next stage of life are no exception. Recent survey data, data suggests the majority of prospective sellers are actively preparing to enter the market this winter. Now this is huge because that never happens. Traditionally, winter is the time when people are constantly trade on the holidays and family and they don't walk people through their home. But this year is going to be different. Actually, according to the survey, 65% of the people who are thinking about uh, moving have just listed or plan to list this winter. 93% of them have already taken steps towards listing their home, including working with an agent, and 36% of them have researched the value of their home and others, uh, other homes in the neighborhood as well as started making repairs and decluttering. So this is huge because 
everything tends to indicate that again this winter is going to be a very active winter because of the number of the buyers still in the market but also the number of people who are thinking about selling. Uh, Daniel Hale, a chief economist at Realtor.com says that listings rose for the second week in a row, row <laughs> with our recent survey data suggesting that a growing share of homeowners are potential sellers eager to find new homes. There is reason to believe this may be the start of a welcome trend especially as we moved into the colder month. So what that really means is that we actually going probably going to see uh, an increased inventory of homes for sale. It will most likely be absorbed uh, by the demand because it is so strong, but that means that we're going to have a very, very active winter. Now talking about interest rates, because this is the second part of the equation, uh, interest rates being so low and everybody is anticipating uh, rates going up. And the question is, well, how is that going to impact the market? How is that going to impact me as a buyer who, or how is that going to impact me as a homeowner wanting to sell? So the first slide that I wanted to share with you is an historic, uh, historical chart of uh, interest rates going back to 2000. And as you can see in 2000, we were at uh, 3.75 we've slowly went down to um, 2.75 I guess somewhere um, uh, in 2020 and today rates are inching back to 3.10 so it is likely that interest are gonna go up um, next year. But if you put things in perspective, remember that a 3% interest rate is super low. We used to, I remember buying a home at 8% and I thought I was getting a good deal. Now, again, if you look at the historical um, interest rates over time and uh, through the different years, you know, from 2016 to today, you can see that um, there is most likely that interest rates are gonna go up and they're probably gonna go back to where we were maybe in 2019, somewhere around that, that number. So definitely interest rates are going up. Now the question and the concern that a lot of people have is, well, if interest rates uh, go up, how is that gonna impact appreciation? Are prices going to drop because interest rates are going up and homes are so expensive, nobody can afford them? Well. If you look at this chart, uh, which is the home prices impact, the home prices are really impacted slightly, slightly, sorry, by rising mortgage rates. What you see in blue is uh, the appreciation per uh, year, and what you see in yellow is uh, interest rates. So as you can see, when interest rates go up they're actually, the, the appreciation is still there. It has really hasn't changed anything. There is very, very little impact on appreciation, which is good news because the best way to forecast the future is to look at what happened in the past. Now, house, house price appreciation is resistant to rising mortgage rates, primarily because most home sellers would rather withdraw from the market than sell at a lower price. So that's known as the downs, a downside sticky phenomenon. And, and what it means is that if prices are gonna go down, sellers are gonna take their home off the market or not sell them at all meaning that prices are very unlikely and will not go down. Now, if you look at the volume of sales in reference to interest rate, again, what you're seeing here in blue are these, the volume of sale and what you're seeing in yellow is uh, interest rate. And as you can see, every time interest rates went up, for example, right before 2000 and again uh, in 2005 and again in somewhere uh, mid uh, 2012, as you can see, every time interest rates went up, the volume of sales also went up. So there is no direct collection, but connection between interest rates going up and volume of volume of sales dropping. Again, this is good news because the, the best way to predict the future is to look at past trends. So now that we know there is actually no connection, there is very, very likely that 20, the next year is going to be an excellent year for real estate as well. You see, context, context matter for purchase demand. The economy is improving and millennials continue to age into their prime home buying years in large numbers. So the, con the context remains really good for the housing market, according to Mark Fleming, chef e chief economist at First American Title. So all in all, it, 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 there's good news for the real estate market. We're going to see a higher volume of sale, most likely. We're going to see uh, home appreciation continue. We're gonna see interest rates going up slightly, but not enough to have an impact on prices. 
Again, if you were to look at mortgage rate projections uh, from the uh, the biggest player in the industry, which are Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Banker Association, National Association of Realtors, if you look at their projection for next year, they, they all agree that interest rates in 2022 are going to be somewhere between 3.3 and 3.7, which is extremely cheap. There is really nothing to complain about when interest rates are this low. If you look at the home price forecast for 2022, again, by the biggest player in the industry, which are Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, the Mortgage Banker Association, National Association of Realtors, everybody agrees that we're going to see appreciation in 2022. It's not going to be anywhere close to what we've seen this year. And thank God, because it's not sustainable. But if you would average out the projections of those big players in the industries, the, the people who actually spend thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours studying the market and have been doing it for 50 years plus, us, they anticipate a 5.1% average appreciation for 2022, which is really excellent. It's enough so that when sellers sell their home, they feel that they're getting away, uh, that they're getting a nice amount of money. And it's enough for buyers to feel confident that there is still appreciation to come and that they are not buying at the peak. Because this is a concern that a lot of buyers have right now. Am I buying too late? Am I buying at the peak? The answer is no, for a couple of reasons. First, if you look at the, pr the, the predicted uh, volume of sales for uh, 2022. We actually anticipate to beat 2020 when we sold 6.5 million homes, which was a record year in volume. And then the last, uh, the last slide here that I'm going to share with you is we are still in a very strong seller's market. And what that means is that that market is just not going to reverse itself in a New York minute. It's going to take time. So what that means is that there is really, really uh, see several years of appreciations ahead of us. Hopefully it is a healthy number, a number that can be sustained over a long period of time rather than to have a very, very fast appreciation like we had this year. But if you look at the, um, the chart um, of the estimated appreciation for uh, the next few years to come, according to the Home Price Expectation Survey, a house that was worth $350,000 in 2021 will be worth uh, 391 by the end of the year. And um, up to 414,000, 430, 445,000 by January 2025. So that means that if you're buying now, you are not buying at the peak of the market. You still have time to accumulate appreciation uh, over time and um, you know get um, get the benefits of uh, either having the larger home that you really want or the first home that you've always wanted to buy. So this was the December 2021 uh, real estate market reports and projections for 2022. I hope you found the information helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please call or text me at the number underneath this video. And don't forget that if you're thinking about buying a home, I have the newest edition of my home buying guide and my home seller guides that are directly available to you for free. All you have to do is ask by dropping a comments underneath this video. See you soon.